Good morning. We're back for our last daily word together. And you might have thought yesterday was our last one. I tricked you. It wasn't. We have one more morning. And so, in keeping with this week, let me say, Buongiorno, come sta? Just in case you happen to speak Italian or are watching. But even if you don't, we're going to study the Bible. So, buckle up, buttercup. It's time to look at Luke 20. We're going to be in verses 19 through 26. So if you want to turn there in your Bible so you can look at it with me. Now Luke 19 to 26 follows hard on the heels of a parable about a vineyard and the terrible tenants that Jesus told in verses 9 to 18. Well, that parable was really the story of the Jews about how they have been constantly, continually, consistently rejecting God. They reject his messengers. They beat his messengers up. They kill his messengers, also known as prophets. And then he sends his son, and they're going to kill him too. So the parable in 9 through 18 is really a story of the Jews from their very formation as a nation. And of course, it's not a complimentary parable. The religious leaders knows that Jesus is denouncing them with this parable, and so their response comes in verse 19. They try to lay hands on him because they understand Jesus is speaking this parable against them. So that brings us to our section, verses 19 to 26. And Jesus has just denounced them with this parable. They're angry. They want to lay hands on him. See, they want to shut him up permanently. They've always hated Jesus, the religious rulers. And they hate him even more after three years of ministry, of bothering them, of calling out their hypocrisy. And so they're trying to shut him up permanently. But here's the thing. They didn't have the power to, to execute Christ. Because Rome only had the power for capital punishment. So the religious leaders realized they would have to get crafty if they were going to kill Jesus. They couldn't just stone him even though they wanted to, because Rome would respond with a vicious reprisal and it wouldn't go well for them. So the religious leaders knew they needed to trap Jesus and they needed to make him an enemy of Rome. Because if they made him an enemy of Rome, then Rome would kill him as an insurrectionist, as a rebel and a traitor. So they near, merely needed to serve Jesus up on a platter to Rome, which meant they needed a pretext to get him in trouble. That's where our story comes into play. Verse 20, these are crafty leaders, so they send spies designed to trap Jesus. These spies are going to ask questions and hope that Jesus will stumble over his words, say something seditious, say something that looks like he's trying to foment rebellion. And then they call the Romans. The Romans see the massive crowds listening to Jesus. The leaders say he's telling people something seditious. Rome grabs him, kills him. End of story. That's what they were hoping. So they start off with this question. Verse 21 it was a question, should we pay taxes to Caesar or not? Well, this wasn't interest, uh, rather innocent. This was treacherous. They hoped that Jesus would say, of course not. Listen, nobody liked paying taxes to the Romans. They hated the Romans. They didn't like paying the poll tax or any other tax. And so they were hoping Jesus would say, no, don't pay taxes to Caesar because then that would make Jesus out to be a rebel, an insurrectionist, and they could arrest him for that or turn him over to the Romans. But Jesus was far too clever for these silly religious leaders. Remember, he's omniscient. He knows their hearts. He reads it like a book. So he knows they're trying to trap him. Look at verse 23. He detected their trickery. And then he does something that catches them off guard, probably. He says, verse 24, Show me a Daenerys, whose likeness and inscription is on it. Well, they probably didn't expect that, but it was an easy enough question. So they found a coin, furnished it to Jesus, and he looks at it. And then they say, well, Caesar's likeness and inscription is on it. And uh, they're right. It was. 
that coin had been minted with the face of Caesar. And since Augustus Caesar had declared himself to be God, they were hoping that Jesus would then denounce this coin, denounce Caesar, and then say, no, these coins are blasphemous, idolatrous, because they have the face of a so-called God on there. And uh, then when Jesus did that, of course, the leaders would arrest him, turn him over to the Jews as one who was trying to lead the Jews away from their Roman overlords. But again, Jesus is too smart for that. He knows everything. His intelligence can't be matched by these crafty leaders. So listen to what he says. Verse 25. And by the way, his response is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it flummoxes them. He says, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. That's a powerful statement that Jesus just unleashed against them. Because it means, yeah, you do have a duty to Caesar. You need to pay him what you're due. And in this case, it was taxes. Which means for us, we have to pay the government taxes. Even if we don't like how they spend our tax dollars. You think the Jews liked the Romans? You think the Jews wanted to pay taxes to those hated Romans? Of course not. But Jesus said, you better pay Caesar what he owes. Or rather, what he's due. So the same applies to us. We have to pay taxes. But then he said, render to God the things that are God's. Which is to say, give him your love, your worship, your honor, your life, your very being. Commit yourself to this God. That, of course, was something the leaders had no intention of doing. They had never done it. They weren't planning on doing it doing it. They lived for themselves and they used religion as a way to advance their own interests, to enrich themselves, empower themselves. They weren't following God as the law prescribed, not in the heart. Theirs was an empty religious formalism. So Jesus says, no, you need to give to Caesar what he deserves and to God what he deserves. Well, how do you think those leaders responded to this? Well, you don't need to worry, just look at the text. Rather, you don't need to wonder. Verse 26 tells you. Basically, they were amazed, they shut their mouths, and they hated him all the more. They weren't persuaded by his answer that they should honor God and thereby honor his son, Jesus. Their vengeance burned even hotter, their hatred even more. And so they listened, but because the people were amazed by Jesus, they couldn't arrest Jesus. They couldn't turn him over to Rome because his answer was brilliant. And so they bided their time and they waited until they could capture him, catch him, and deliver him to the Romans, which in not much time they would do just that. But this is a picture of the brilliance of Jesus and the incredible hardness of man's heart, which sadly we still see today everywhere the gospel is preached and men reject it.